Hi, everybody. You guys awake? Yeah? Okay, really quickly, I need a show of hands. How many entrepreneurs in the audience? Hands up. Whoa. Okay. How many pitched for funding? Yeah, very good. How many got rejected? How many are pitching this year? There's more people. Okay. Okay, ready? So, uh, we only have 30 minutes. Uh, there's no roving mic, so I can't do a Q&A from the audience, but you can tweet your questions at me, at FIDA, F-I-D-A, and I can ask, okay? If they think it's uh, in line with the conversation. So, I'm gonna start with Ahmed Al Alfi, the founder of Saudi Ventures, and subsequently Flat6. Uh, both huge ecosystem establishments, and he a huge ecosystem star. I'm sure you're all aware of who Ahmad is. I'm going to get him to give us an overview of the ecosystem landscape, since he's pretty much one of the founding members of the entire entrepreneurial ecosystem in MENA. Uh, so, uh, thank you, and uh, I'll keep the comments fairly brief, but I think we've had a gradual development of the ecosystem, let's say just look over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, there were very few companies that got any traction, and the ones that were starting to happen actually got funded. About five years ago, there was a lot more activity, but less mature companies, and uh, there were a lot of angels and seed funds and people like uh, Fadi Randur and other people and us made a lot of small investments to try and help expand and fertilize the ecosystem. Now we're seeing a couple of additional phenomena. I think that we're seeing a lot of people uh, come into start companies because it's chic or because it's cool, not because they're as personally committed. Somebody who left a job 10 years ago to start a company didn't do it because anybody told them being an entrepreneur was cool. Right? Being an entrepreneur was a dumb idea, and why would you leave your corporate job? Or in certain countries, why would you leave your government job? Uh, so I fear that there may be a trend of over-glorifying entrepreneurship right now, and uh, it's really not that glorious for, for, I'm sure most of you know and would not in agreement, it's a pretty painful road. Uh, on the financing side, the comment that I'd make is we probably still don't have enough money at certain points in the cycle. Uh, the PE firms later are well stocked, have lots of money for the 50 plus million, 30 plus million dollar deals. In the middle, VC funds are starting to come up and we have, we're starting to get some good traction in those areas. Uh, kind of at the angel area and in the accelerator, the very first seed, that's where uh, I think we need to better fund the ecosystem right now. Ahmed, we talked about this before. Um, a lot of the startups say there's no money to be had. That's the constant thing I hear everywhere. It's a constant thing I hear during interviews at any ecosystem event. What are your thoughts? Uh, there's, there's money to be had, and the, one of the complaints I hear is, gee, we have to go outside the region to go get funding. I think that's great. If somebody can go outside the region and get funding, that's wonderful. Bring additional people into the ecosystem. So on that, I don't know how many of you know Carpool Arabia, but they had difficulty getting funded here, and then they went outside and got funded in France. So we don't have a, an exclusive lock on knowing what good ideas are. We know the ideas we think are good. We don't have, we don't encompass all knowledge, right? If somebody else from the outside sees something that the VCs in the region don't see, that's wonderful. I think it's a great opportunity. And if you can convince somebody to fund you from a VC in Europe or from Asia, I think that's phenomenal. It's additive. We're probably the only business, the venture capital and investment business, where we love to see more players. It's not competitive, it's additive for there to be three, four, five more people who are in the same space. It builds the ecosystem. On a PE level, I can see where people are competing for deals. We don't compete for deals. We're dying to find deals to collaborate on. We want to work together and we want more people in our space to work together. Can I just, Speak. Sorry, I just want to say something? If you look at Europe, which is um, advanced compared to the Middle East, and you even look at the US and even Silicon Valley, you hear that statement all the time. There's not enough money. And I think wherever you go in this world, you're going to continue to hear that statement. 
Uh, I think it's a good thing because if capital isn't finite, we're going to have a serious problem. Um, and I think, like the laws of nature, you just have people compete for a finite set of capital, which hopefully creates the best opportunities. Danny, how many pitches did you receive at Beko in 2015, and how many actually did you say yes to? So we saw about 400, and we made four new investments. Okay, what were the key uh, reasons that you chose those four? So, we, I mean, the macro investment theme that we have is they need to be scalable business businesses that can build in a scalable manner. Uh, they have to have a transformational value propositions, and I know that that's something that's difficult to quantify, but we spend a lot of time internally as a team uh, debating the, and quantifying how transformational the value proposition is. Um, and then they have to be being pursued and built by a very strong founding team, and, and team, I mean team, not just one person. Um, I think those are the key ingredients. What are your thoughts on single founders, like single like startups that have one founder? It's not ideal. We wouldn't shy away from it, but what we would do is try and help uh, bring co-founders to the table. It's worth mentioning that every single investor I've ever talked to has said they're not fond of single founder startups. Tech stars and my combinators won't take a single founder fond. application. Yeah, not fond at all. I think. Speak into the mic. Can't hear you. Yeah, the the team is uh, very important. And uh, as there are many entrepreneurs here, uh, as a show of hand, I would ask them, are you a team? Do you, how many people within your team do you, do you look at as your peers, as opposed to people working? Um, how many of you are single founder startups? OK, and is it hard? Is it hell? Yes? No? You're good? OK, how many I, of you looked for a co-founder and couldn't find one? Because that will affect your funding. Okay. And I'll add to that is one of the founder um, savvy in terms of technology, because that's, uh, that's a key component to the success of the startup. So we like to see within the founding team a technology person. Not Hala, just a you're a co-founder of Leap. Absolutely. So do you want to just tell them why Leap came about really quickly? Because this is related to the funding paradox. Yeah, so um, just uh, a bit jumping on what uh, Ahmad said regarding the ecosystem, we identified as a team uh, within LEAP a gap in the funding ecosystem. Um, and that gap is uh, what we call Series B funding, so five to $10 million tickets uh, that are injected in a company for it to grow and to grow very fast. And in addition to the five and to $10 million tickets, we bring in uh, experience from the team. So we would invest in very few companies to scale them and grow them um, as the pitfall of this ecosystem has been exits. We've seen too few exits. And we think that to reach an exit, you need to reach a critical size as a company and as an entrepreneur. And this critical size can only be reached if you have enough money invested in you to grow your resources, to scale your technology, and to expand geographically. OK, so Leap is Series B, not Series A. How many pitches did you get that were actually qualifying for Series B, in your opinion, last year, 2015? 140. Okay. Knowing that only 2% of total startups make it to Series B in the US. Uh, so in fact, I should have seen much fewer companies. OK, Angus, so STC Ventures, how many pitches did you get last year? Um, we probably recorded about you know, 300 and something pitches in our database. We probably received you know, a bunch more that weren't credible, weren't relevant to us. But 300, and let's say the success rate out of that would be broadly 1%, which is consistent with the kind of the, the hit rate that you'd see in uh, Europe, US. So you know, we made three, four investments last year. OK, I've got, a, I've got a couple questions from the audience. These are really good, you guys. I'm going to get to whatever I can. Uh, would you fund a single founder startup? Um, we have done, obviously, you know, echoing what everyone else has said, you know, preferences to find, you know, multiple uh, co-founder startups. You know, there's a lot to do, it's hard work, um, it de-risks it for the investor. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Please. What about they say that VCs are too risk averse? Re VCs are not in risk Mena, averse at In Mena. All. In Mena. Um, yeah. Listen, v VCs are, you know, VCs are investing other people's money. We've got to make a return. So, um, of course, we're risk averse. We don't want to lose the money um, for the investors. 
Don't forget that every single fund here is a first-time fund. You know, nobody has a track record. Um, so, you know, if we screw this one up, you know, that's going to screw up the industry for the future. So, I guess that would lead to a certain level of extra, you know, risk averseness in, in these first-time funds. But um, everyone's taking risks. I mean, you know, go Google what investments people have made, and then check out their websites. There'll be gaps. Those are the ones that didn't that didn't make out. Okay, Danny, I know two startups right now who have been struggling to close their rounds. They are literally both missing $200,000, which isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, right? But it is, I mean, if you're not maybe familiar with the startup itself or so on and so forth, or they don't have a track record in the ecosystem. I don't know. How long should a round typically take? How long should it take? Yeah. To close. I think on the average, it's taking six months. Alfie or Ahmed. So, uh, one of our companies in Silicon Valley, the round closed in three days. Okay? It depends on the company and depends on the entrepreneur. And I'd like to comment on your previous question. So, um, a large part of the money that we invest actually is my money. And I'm really tired of this, oh, we don't get funded enough, the VCs take advantage of us in the valuations. If we were really taking advantage of everybody, I'd be rich. We'd all be making a ton of money. We're actually investing in a lot of companies that had we had a broader pool of companies, I wouldn't have touched right to deploy founders that are for the first time that have very little experience and so uh, i mean i really resent this perception that the vcs are really taking advantage of the ecosystem if that was true the vcs would be making a lot of money you don't see that you don't see everybody here making lots of exits and making lots of money there's a good deal happens an exit once a year twice a year it's not like every month somebody's you know making a mint so uh, we, we do the work that kind of is very, very process oriented, that tries to come to what we think is a reasonable valuation given the market risk. So far, I'd say over the last 10 years, VCs have been very generous because they haven't made a lot of money. Okay, really quickly on that note, um, Ahmad said something interesting. An investment is not a donation. So they want these business models that they pick to make money as much as you do, right? So they're not vetting your business model out of the equation because they don't uh, want to make money. It's because they don't think you're going to make money. So they're actually doing you a favor. So you have to listen to investors' feedback. Hala? Yeah, I just wanted to say that there are two parts in this equation. So one part is the entrepreneur trying to raise money and the other part is us trying to raise money. And uh, I think on the latter part, there isn't enough money in the ecosystem in general. Um, I've, I've wrote an article recently and if we benchmark the region to the rest of the world, we should be investing around 0.3% of GDP into the ecosystem in venture capital. So for Dubai only, for the UAE, 0.3% is $1.2 billion. I don't see $1.2 billion every year being poured into the Dubai ecosystem in venture capital. Okay, on that note, I got a tweet. Uh, Danny, this is for you. We, they, they quoted your ratio. We saw 400 and did four new investment. Somebody said, what a start of optimism. So I don't know if we should be overly optimistic because entrepreneur as a brand, I find can be overly optimistic. So we're trying to deliver some realism. So I think everyone, the entrepreneurs in the audience have to understand that just like you have a business model, we have one too. Um, and before I talk about the business model, as you were saying, Hala, we actually also have to go out there and pitch very hard to attract dollars into our coffers to then hopefully give them to the ecosystem and invest in, in entrepreneurs. But back to the business model. So our business, the business of venture capital, is very different to um, the later stage growth and private equity uh, business models. And what I mean by that is, that is the private equity is uh, governed by normal distribution from a returns perspective. Venture capital is all about the power law. And what the power law means is we make 10 investments, eight go nowhere, return 1x capital, and two will return 10, 15, 20 times. That's how we generate our returns. The ones who succeed are paying a tax in their valuation and their terms for the ones that don't succeed. That's, that's, that's what, how the ecosystem works and that's how we generate our uh, returns. So I think if you keep that in mind and understand just like you guys have to go out and pitch, so do we, and you have a business model that you have to convince your uh, financiers, whoever they may be, that you can generate returns, we do too and we're governed by the power law. And that's why, just sorry, in 2012 we saw 80 
uh, deals, and we made an investment, so that's, under, that's about a percent. And this year, we will see, hopefully, between 800 and 1,000 uh, new transactions, new deals, and we will make 8 to 10 new investments. Okay, so in brief, just to recap what he said, remember that they've got to raise money too. So they've got to justify everything that they, they've got, you know, stakeholders involved. So it's not just their pocket money. And in terms of what Ahmed was saying, he actually invests his own funds. So he's putting his own neck on the line. So when they do reject your pitch, you have to remember that they're in a place also that needs to be able to justify the investment. Angus. Um, this is from the audience. How to handle investor questions about valuation during first round? If it's a small user and merchant base. Um, what's the question specifically? What, you so know, what's basically, the valuation? how do they execute their valuation when, they, when they've got a small user and merchant base? Um, I mean, I think obviously at the very early stages, you know, you can't really pin a valuation to sort of, you know, revenues or users or whatever it happens to be. There just has to be a fair discussion between, you know, entrepreneur and investor. Um, we're not trying to rip them off and they shouldn't try and rip us off and, you know, hopefully, you know, the parties will, will, will settle on something sensible. You know, there's a, there's a base below which, you know, any VC would not dip um, because you know, you're not being fair to the entrepreneur and you're not setting them up to be incentivized to, to, to grow the business. Yeah, well, just one piece of advice, valuation is just one element of a package and the package is a term sheet and there are many other terms in the term sheet that can be much more uh, damageable than valuation. Such as? Such as liquidation preference, anti-dilution clauses, many, many other uh, Can I just terms. give you a rule of thumb? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I want to just one comment on valuations. The four of us might see something exactly the same and actually think exactly the same of the skill set of the entrepreneur. And the reason we value it differently is what we think we can bring to the table. And that's something that you have to put into consideration of which VC has which area of expertise and can add value because they will give you a higher valuation and a better perception of your company. So really quickly for the entrepreneurs in the room, it's the same thing when we get editorial pitches, right? So if you're just sending the same pitch to 20 different publications with 20 different focuses, it's not going to work. So really do your research, right? So if you're approaching, say, Flat6, Leap, STC, Beko, you've got to see, is this the kind of business they even care about, first of all, and can they add value? So that's something I think that often goes overlooked. Just on that note, uh, Amir, my partner, is conducting a session, I think, uh, tomorrow, exactly on this subject. It's called Bad Terms. What time? I apologize. I don't know the exact time. Amir, what time? Are you here? There he is. No? What time? Okay. Look it up yeah. in, the, in the app. Okay. But well, I think just sliding on, scale the range. Pitching, on pitching, Henry, my partner, is doing a, a training tomorrow. Okay, and Leap VC is training tomorrow. Do you know what time? In the morning. Okay. Um, Hala, another one. How, many, how much details of a strategic plan should a startup reveal, or shouldn't a startup reveal, to potential investors? They should reveal everything. <laughs> okay, so reveal everything. Uh, your, idea, your idea is worth nothing, your execution is worth everything. Ideas are open source, execution is the only proprietary thing you have. Angus? Yeah, I mean, tell us everything. We're not going to steal your idea, you know, we're going to do nothing with it. Yeah, so that's a good point. They're not going to steal your idea, right? And ideas are open source. Danny? I totally agree. Okay, so the more transparent you are, the better. So this idea where you're holding back information, being a cat and mouse with the investors, probably not a good idea. Well, our business model is built on trust. You know, yeah, if exactly. we uh, compromise that trust, then our, you know, our businesses are finished. So yeah, you know, whatever you tell us, we'll treat confidentially, don't worry. Okay, uh, anybody can answer this one. Do you fund startups targeting the U.S.? Let's start. I know flat six. Ta ta targeting yes. the U.S.? Yeah. Yeah, sure. We fund startups targeting anywhere in the world. Uh, if they're planning on opening something here. Okay, so it has to be based here, but your market can. Yeah, there needs to be something here, like a okay. back kitchen or a significant so you have to be substantial operations. For Leap, there has to be some connection to MENA, SEC? Uh, we've made investments in the U.S. Businesses that are looking to come here are already doing business here. Yeah. We're, we're a MENA-focused uh, investor. Okay. Um, Hala, I want to talk about the money leaving the region. So everybody knows that some of the biggest players in the market with money don't invest in MENA. Hala, your thoughts? Yeah, well, this makes me angry, actually. <laughs> Uh, because as I said before, we need, if we take just the UAE, 1.2 billion invested every year into the venture capital industry. So when I see large funds investing huge amounts of money outside the region, 
uh, you know, we need a leap of faith into this region, into people from the region believing in entrepreneurs and tech entrepreneurs from the region. Uh, so it's, it's the first step. They should do their duties first, investing in the region before going outside. Okay. I, I wanna, I Has this add, changed? Go second. ahead. It, it's not a leap of faith. Okay. It's been proven. So the funders here should fund here. And the thing I'd like to add to the article that had an excellent article that she wrote, the point three tenths of the three tenths of one percent. That pool of money has funded companies in the U.S. that now amount to over twenty percent of GDP. So if you want to build a new market sector as a set of sovereign wealth funds or government or whatever, this is where you should be investing. So I, I used to get frustrated uh, by the same phenomenon and I get less frustrated now because as we go out and talk to these institutions here locally, they, it's a matter of time. It's going to happen if not this year, next year, it, it's just a matter of time. And, and, and by the way, it's, it's down to the size. When we hit a certain size of fund size or capital base, then these institutional investors and sovereign wealth funds will be able to participate with their smallest ticket because we are a small ecosystem today. Yeah. Danny, I mean, this one's for you. Do you see a perceptible difference between MENA startups and Silicon Valley startups? Uh, from an editorial perspective, I can see, I mean, I guess, yes, there is some difference, but I mean, I'm not sure if it's something that the investors are going to be able to actually give you points on. Go. I mean, it's a very difficult one to answer. There's obviously, a, so the, there are three things that make a, a startup ecosystem. Number one is density. And density, and this is for those of you who want to read about it, written by a wonderful gentleman called Brad Feld, who wrote a book called Startup Communities and just published it recently. Uh, it's on Audible as well if you don't like uh, reading hard copies. But basically, density is the number of entrepreneurs uh, working in high growth companies divided by the total population. Uh, you know, I mean, guys, this is the celebration of entrepreneurship right here. Dubai has done a phenomenal job, and the entire region is catching the same, the same. Uh, uh, yeah, but I worry bug. that we're celebrating too much and not working enough, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I think no. I, I mean, we might have differing opinions on this one, but I think you just need to continue. I, there needs to. Th do you know why is, I say that? Because so, I get pitches for editorial just on the fact that they have an idea that they want to launch. That's fine, but that's I think not newsworthy, nor is it money worthy. Well, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to work hard. Uh, I'm a big believer in hard work. I'm a really, really big believer in hard work. Angus, if the rate funded is lower than 10%, how many years in the market do they need for you to invest on average? Uh, I'm not sure years so what, makes a difference here. I'm not sure I understand the question, but I'll just correct you on that one. It's 1%, it's not 10%. 10% 10 would be no, a phenomenal. If you invest, I think, is less than 10% in the valuation. I'm sorry? If you invest less than 10% of the valuation. Next question. Okay, right, let's move on. Um, so, yeah, so somebody reinforced your comment about being an entrepreneur being chic. So, guys, it's not chic to raise money, right? Like, I mean, I don't know, Hala, you've had to raise, no? Yeah, so what's the, what was that like? It is like uh, begging. <laughs> yeah. You have to be very persistent. Um, you have to bury your ego. Um, and you have to listen. You have to listen to their concerns and address them um, in, in a constructive way. I see a lot of entrepreneurs that probably don't listen enough and I should be listening more. Okay, uh, we've got three seconds on the clock. So really quickly, Ahmad, do you have a closing comment? Like any advice, just a piece of funding advice? Work, work your tail off. Everybody, everybody I fund should work harder than I do. If I see him at the coffee shop having a shisha or sitting in front of me in the plane, I'm not interested. Okay. <laughs> yeah, build a team and make sure uh, technology is at the heart of what you do. Okay, I guess. Um, do your homework. You know, no one can expect you to have answers to everything. Yeah, but, I don't think know. we touched on that. Do your homework is so important, right? Because they know what other models are out there that might be doing better than yours or have more traction, so on and so forth. Dan? The entrepreneurs are the leaders. You guys have to lead the charge to where we're going. We are only feeders and we will do our part. And uh, I just want to reinforce what Danny was talking about earlier. As much as you guys have to raise, they have to raise, right? And then at the end of the day, they've got uh, stakeholders, shareholders, just like you do. So, I mean, give them a break. Thanks so much, everyone.